How you doing fam bam? This is Chris Bezo here. I'm gonna show you how to connect your DualSense Edge controller to your PC. But before you even think about purchasing a DualSense Edge controller, please note, you have to have a PlayStation 5 available. It doesn't matter if you own a PlayStation 5. As long as if you have access to one, it could be a friend's, it could be a family member's, it could be a Best Buy that is local to you or a local game store that you can go to to set your profiles onto your DualSense Edge controller. Otherwise, your back paddles are rendered useless. I'm gonna give you that fair warning before you even think about purchasing a $199.99 USD controller. Otherwise, you could have just bought a regular DualSense controller and done the same exact thing. But now we got that out the way. Hopefully you have a PlayStation 5 already available. And if you do, that's great. That's awesome because I'm gonna show you how to enter the DualSense Edge settings and set your different profiles. Once you set your profiles for your DualSense Edge, you will be able to know which profiles you entered because your controller will actually give you the haptic feedback to let you know which profile you entered, which is a really nice feature that Sony gave into these controllers. It is a really thoughtful feature. It gives up to four different profiles. You have a default profile and then you have three other profiles that you can choose to and you can swap out about, I believe it's three other profiles if you want, and you'll be able to set your joystick settings, you'll be able to set your paddle settings, and I will go over each one. First and foremost, please make sure that your DualSense Edge controller is fully charged. When it is fully charged, you can enter your PlayStation 5, and you can enter the map layout and settings there. So let's open up this PlayStation case. It's ready and charged up. Now this time we got both zippers working. And here it is. And let's start it up. And get ready to set up these map controls for your DualSense Edge controller. So right here, we're on the main screen. You wanna make sure you go over to the controller right here and you're gonna enter a DualSense Edge wireless controller. And you're gonna go to controller settings. Once you go to controller settings, you're gonna want to go over to custom profiles. We're gonna give it a name. We're gonna call this one, let's say, we'll call it Spider-Man. You're just gonna go down to the back paddles here. I'm gonna make the right paddle here. I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna put right arrow and then left arrow for this one, just for easier access for shortcuts, just say, especially on Miles Morales. So we're just gonna click apply. If you wanna change out any of these, you're more than welcome to. You can even remove the R3 setting and swap it out to here. So just apply that profile, and then you're gonna also change out your dead zones. Also, I wanna describe each control just in case if you're afraid to go off a of default, don't be afraid to go off a of default because uh, Sony does really give some really great options here. For quick is really good if you want to move very fast in a game, like if it's an action or adventure game, it's able to respond very quick. It's great for aiming. It's great for the right analog stick if you want to control in games, such as Call of Duty or Tomb Raider, or even it's great for fast camera angles as well. And precise is good for if you prefer more sneak and stealthy type of uh, games. And that way you would not be able to snap out of it and end up accidentally running or something while you're in game. And then when you enter steady, that is also really good if you want a more precise, uh, say aim like off of a sniper rifle, or if you want to be able to be able to just kind of really move exactly how your thumb input is, this is a great option to go. And digital is great for say like fighting games because you get instant reaction off of the joystick or such as, or even games such as NBA 2K23 where you choose to shoot the baskets off of your joystick. And dynamic is also a great option if you like to use a little bit of both when it's slow or fast. So in order to do so, if you're moving the stick slow, it will respond slow. If you're moving the joystick quickly, 
then the joystick will respond just as quick. So these are all great options and think over it carefully because the games that you constantly play, you will realize, just say like if you like to play games such as Cyberpunk, Dynamic is a great option. You can see how quick it will respond to that dead zone. When you see that blue adjust the input, that is your adjustment and then the actual controller input is the gray. You won't see much here, but once you start changing the curve adjustment, then you will see some sort of impact here. If I move it very slow, then you can see the difference. So we'll leave that to say three is a little much. We'll put it at two. And then you can even set dead zone adjustments if you don't want it to be too sensitive. But in Spider-Man, we're going to make it a little bit sensitive. So we'll leave that alone. And trigger adjustments, you can choose to activate the trigger almost immediately if you want. Or if you want to have a certain dead zone, just so that way you want the space to push, then you would make it. So if you make it, say, ten, nine you won't activate it until you pass that gray zone and enter the blue zone right there. But in Spider-Man, that won't be any good. That would be better for, say, first-person shooters. So we're going to assign the profile. We'll make it function circle. Click OK. And now it will change into the Spider-Man profile. Now we can go back into here. If you want to make another profile, very simple. All you have to do is enter custom profile here and you're gonna create another custom profile. So now we got all your profiles set for your DualSense Edge controller. Now you wanna hook it up to your PC. There is two separate ways you can do it. The first option is relatively simple and straight to the point, which is you just use the same USB wire that came with your DualSense Edge controller, hook it up to your PC, USB-A to USB-C, which is at the back of the, this DualSense controller right here. And once you do that, you'll be able to access the DualSense Edge controller and the PC will recognize it practically immediately and you don't have to add any extra features or any drivers or anything like that. Your PC will recognize it's a controller and all you have to do is follow the next timestamp down below, which is how I show you how to set up your controller interference on Steam. So that way your DualSense Edge controller can actually look ha have the DualSense layout instead of having a Xbox layout. But if you wanna hook it up via Bluetooth, and it's actually really simple to do, all you have to do is hit this splash button up here, and then you're gonna hit this PlayStation button right there. Once you start to see it blink, you will pair it to your PC. So right now, as we still got it in Bluetooth pairing mode, I'm gonna show you how to hook it up via PC. You're gonna go down to the Windows button down here, and you're gonna just type Bluetooth and devices. When that comes up, now you're gonna enter pair a new device. You're just gonna add a new device, go to Bluetooth, and you're gonna see DualSense Edge Wireless Controller, click it, and that easy, your device is ready to go. You're probably thinking, Chris Muzo, what about games that are not on Steam? Will the DualSense Edge controller work on them? And they certainly will. They'll work on non-Steam games perfectly fine. Once you have your DualSense Edge controller hooked up to your PC, you're gonna see it look just like this with the lights. It's gonna have like an aqua blue color to it. And you wanna make sure you're into big, big picture mode because a lot of the games, they won't respond unless you do go into big picture mode. Some games will respond just fine if you don't, but if you want to make sure that the games respond perfectly, perfectly fine, this is the best way to do it. So you're gonna go into the controller area and you're gonna make sure you go under uh, Game Rumble if you want that on. If you want the enable Steam for PlayStation controller, that is on. So now when you enter a game such as say Final Fantasy or something, then you'll be able to play it. You can play Metro Exodus if you want. A lot of the games that are compatible with DualSense, actually Metro Exodus, you can actually use the haptic feedback if you want on a DualSense uh, Edge controller or just a regular DualSense uh, controller here. Let's go into Final Fantasy so I can show you an example of it. You'll see it kind of load up with the controller layout. It's gonna let load up the PlayStation configuration for Final Fantasy. Certain games, they require to have USB hooked up to it for better compatibility. 
Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can play Metro Exodus. You can. It's a great game for having a DualSense controller, especially because you get the feel the haptic feedback and you get a great response in the game. Only issue is in order to feel it, you have to have it hooked up to USB. Otherwise, it will not work correctly. As you can see, you have all your PlayStation controls in Final Fantasy. And, and now we can enter the game itself to actually get a response and test it out to make sure everything is working great. So we'll just load up any game here. We'll load this up. The great thing is if you're wondering how to switch up profiles, or if you remember, as we spoke about earlier, when we talked about switching up profiles, you just go into your DualSense Edge controller and you simply, all you have to do is hit the function button on here, which is these two little switches on the bottom here. You could go into function and for default triangle and it shows profile one, a function and say square, we go into profile four and function and uh, you could go into X and then it shows profile three, but now we'll just go into, just say, we'll go into profile two and then we'll play it then. And it will remember your paddles that you have set up for your PC. As you can see, it's responding as I'm switching up the blade for a shortcut instead of actually hitting the D-pad if that's what you would like. We'll go and roam around, do some tests, make sure that it is functioning correctly. Go into this area over here. We're gonna sprint. And it's that simple to really use a DualSense Edge controller on PC. You can't map it onto PC like you would like to. It'd be a really nice feature, but I'm sure that there will be a way, there will be some sort of GitHub mod or a software out there that you will be able to swap it over eventually. Just give it time. It's responding well so far, and we're gonna test it out in this whole battle scene here, and let's see how well it responds to it. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna hit block, parry. That's working good, very responsive. And there we go, we completed the uh, mission. Now we know the DualSense Edge controller works perfectly fine through Bluetooth. It's really that simple to set up. And you can also choose to go into the other options if you want into Steam, calibrate the joysticks if you want through there. So another option is you can, if you want to switch out profiles and you don't want to be able to go and look for a PlayStation 5, you can also go into the game and actually change out the configurations in game. So that way you can set it up for your paddles to say, you just have to do a little bit of switching. You just gotta remember which controls you wanna switch it to. Just for example, if you use the shortcut for the D-pad left and right, just remember whichever controls that you wanna change it to, you change that D-pad left and right, say your grenades or um, your flashbangs, or say if it's your uh, nitrous, if you're playing a race, uh, racing game, or if you wanna change it over to like maybe a quick attack in a fighting game. So just some ideas you can do it, definitely be able to adjust to it. Just you have to be mindful for which controls that you configured it for. You just have to remember how you set it. Hopefully this helped you out. If it did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who needs help with their DualSense Edge controller, make sure you share this video with them. If you're not part of the Big Wonderful Fan Band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my Twitter handle right here as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. So Fan Band guys, how are your thoughts for DualSense Edge for PC? Do you feel like the world's ready? for having a DualSense Edge controller for PC, or do you feel like it's just better to wait for the Xbox Elite version three to be released later this summer? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.